Hi there, I'm Tracy Smith, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. If you haven't yet read it, or now seen it on the silver screen, you've almost certainly heard of Delia Owens' record-breaking first novel, Where the Crawdads Sing. Lee Cowan met up with the writer and her Academy Award-winning admirer. Hello? Hey, Crawdads is back at number one. <laughs> It holds the record for being number one for the most weeks. And this was your very first novel. First novel. <laughs> it's a journey that's attracted all kinds of famous fireflies to Delia's flame, not the least of whom is Academy Award winner Reese Witherspoon. I grew up with women like Delia, and I sat around tables with women telling their stories, and I knew and women drinking, out. Drinking whiskey out of a tea. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> Sometimes in a tea whiskey cap. in a tea cup. Sometimes in a mason jar. A Hollywood uh, star and a best-selling author. You can probably see where this is heading. I have, like you, heard the tall tales told about the Marsh Girl. There's more from Delia Owens and Reese Witherspoon coming up a little later in the show. What was it like when you went on set? Did you go down and Oh you my gosh. We were on set different days, different but days. they sent me pictures from when she saw Daisy in the costumes for the first time. What was it like walking into seeing Kaya's house? Oh, it's surreal because I was so close to the characters, especially Kaya. I had known them for a long time, longer than anybody else. And I felt so deeply about Kai and Tate and Mabel and Jim and all of them. I just felt like I'd known them for years. And um, they had told me several actors that may have played Kai and I was just thinking, I'm not sure that would work. And then they sent an audition of Daisy Edgar Jones hmm. auditioning for the part. And I, they found Kaya. Then Rita Braver takes us inside an exhibit framing the black experience spanning multiple centuries and continents. Is there an overall point that this exhibit makes? Yes, I think it shows us how integral black cultures are to the development of Western civilization of the modern world. The exhibit looks forward as well as back with images that celebrate exuberance and beauty but also reflect continuing struggle and activism. One of the most dramatic works is this photographic self-portrait by non-binary South African artist Zanele Mholi, who used steel wool pads to form the crown. Why'd you make it so big? To have the impact that you see that it has today. <laughs> <laughs> That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. Her first, and for now, only book took more than a decade to write. But when Delia Owens finally blessed the world with Where the Crawdads Sing, the accolades, awards, and new experiences kept on coming her way. But as Lee Cowan found out, she's still most at home in the environment that inspired her epic novel turned film. You love these things, don't you? I do. <laughs> Especially when they start. You might think becoming one of the world's best-selling novelists would change a person. My property manager wants to cut these, and I'm like, don't you dare. No, I think it's great. I love it. <laughs> Makes me feel like I'm in the bush. But not Delia Owens. Whether it's driving her ATV through the brush. Oh, it does feel good. Um, oh. Or wading into a river. Oh, oh, I see a little minnow. She's the same rugged southern belle that she always was. <laughs> before her blockbuster novel, Where the Crawdads Sing, made her a literary phenom. Do you still kind of pinch yourself that this is all oh, happening? Oh, every day. I still don't believe it's happening. Yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you you here? invited <laughs> us. <laughs> I mean, see me on Sunday morning in my living room. I mean, no, I still, I don't believe any of it. To this day, even Putnam, her publisher, can't really believe it, because Crawdads has broken all kinds of records. Hello? Hey, Crawdads is back at number one. <laughs> it holds the record for being number one for the most weeks. And this was your very first novel. First novel. <laughs> it's a journey that's attracted all kinds of famous fireflies to Delia's flame, not the least of whom is Academy Award winner Reese Witherspoon. Haven't 11 million people read this book around <gasps> the world? Or is... 
Great. 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's even better. It was Witherspoon who plucked Delia out of relative obscurity back in 2018, enthusiastically adding Where the Crawdads Sing to her Hello Sunshine book club. It just blew me away. It felt like when I was reading To Kill a Mockingbird or just any sort of classic Southern literature. So when I got to meet Delia, I was like, <laughs> who are you? This is amazing. So you have to come to my horse park. Witherspoon is from Tennessee. Owens is a native of Georgia. I'm so glad you're here. Two tomboys from the South well, who bonded almost I immediately. I grew up with women like Delia and I sat around tables with women telling their stories and I knew and women drinking, out drinking whiskey out of a tea. Yeah, <laughs> drinking whiskey. <laughs> Sometimes in a tea cup. In a tea cup. <laughs> Sometimes in a mason jar. A Hollywood uh, star and a best-selling author. You can probably see where this is heading. I have, like you, heard the tall tales told about the Marsh Girl. Where the Crawdads Sing is now one of the most anticipated movies of the summer. You can't live alone in the Marsh forever. Watch me. Shot along the coast of Louisiana, the film follows Owens' main character, Kaya, a young girl left to raise herself in the marshes of North Carolina. I'd been out in the marsh plenty of times with Jody, but never alone. And then she layers on this thriller element, there's a murder. There's no fingerprints on the railing, great stuff. The marsh girl, she killed him. I would have, I would have loved to have been Kaya. <laughs> you would have been a great Kaya. <laughs> I'm a little too old, but that's part of what I loved about it. Is like that's the kind of movies I want to make. I want to be like, I want to be that character. I know what to do. <laughs> Witherspoon had her hands full just producing the movie, so up-and-coming British actress Daisy Edgar Jones was cast in the role of Kaya. If you can capture the tone or the essence or the feeling that you have when you read a book, that's the main thing, really. You want me to beg for my life? I don't have it in me. I won't. I will not offer myself up. They can make their decision. It took Owens more than a decade to write Crawdads, all in her Idaho mountain retreat. That's where we first met her, back in 2019. Do you get lonely out here? <laughs> I, I do. I like get so lonely sometimes I feel like I can't breathe. As a wildlife scientist, she spent years in some of the most remote parts of Africa. Being alone nourishes her, in the same way that the nature around her does, especially in a marsh. I feel at home when I'm in a place like this. Yeah. You can put me in the middle of a desert or in the middle of the mountains. When I'm out away from everything else, I feel like I'm home. Her novel was born out of those same feelings, a true labor of love, she says that's reflected in the film. They invited me to come to the set. They took me through the woods, we rounded this bend through the forest, and there's this Kaya shack on this lagoon, and it looks exactly like I wrote it in the book. There's Kaya shack. Mom! Then they start talking, and my words come out. Am I your girlfriend now? Do you want to be? I know feathers. That the other girls don't know feathers. All right, then. <laughs> it was the most surreal. It was part real, part invented or created, and yet it, it, that's what a movie does. You know, it was just bringing all these elements together. It was beautiful. That said, she was always anxious to get back to the things she knew. It has great molars there for chewing. Bugs and critters, all under a gentle canopy of trees. This is where Kaya would have been. This is what Kaya loved, being out in the wild, in the forest, in the, among nature. Since our last visit, she traded the wintry woods of Idaho. Look at this, wow, look at that. For this, the rolling hills of North Carolina. Have deer, a lot of groundhogs, turkeys. And we have bears. There's a bear along the river who has three little cubs. Really? Yes. It's an old historic horse farm. Should have three or four. Delia plans to have a few herself, to yeah. ride off and get lost in it all, where bears or no bears, <laughs> she does her best work. Do you write out here? I, well, I didn't bring you today, but I always bring a little uh, pad 
and a, a paper and a pen because yes, how can you not write out here? I'm fairly sure that pavement, tarmac, hardens the heart and softens the brain. <laughs> if that sounds like she's writing her next book, well, she is. The pink ones are the 1800s. She's on her third draft. Is it harder though? Does it's it harder like because I feel the pressure and the expectations are high. I don't want to let anybody down and I don't know how, what are the chances of doing this again. <laughs> if you pose that question to Reese Witherspoon, however, she thinks Delia's chances are pretty good. I'm glad I only have to do this once. <laughs> all the time. Now, don't say that. You don't I'm know. Completely yep. worn out. And I'm excited problem. she's writing another book. We're going to talk in a minute. Oh. Not bad for a naturalist who never really looked for the spotlight. She'd settle for the warm glow of a campfire just about any day. And she thinks most of the rest of us probably would too. Oh, that's so nice. All the numbers, all the weeks on the on the bestseller list, I get excited. You see me get excited. It is exciting, but that to me is not the most important part. To me, the most important part is to re write a story that means something. That connects. That connects us all together. I feel very, there are a lot of crawdads out there. <laughs> More exclusive excerpts of Lee Cowan's conversation with Delia Owens and Reese Witherspoon in just a few minutes. But up next, we take you to a powerful exhibit in our nation's capital. On display at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., an exhibit featuring stunning, inspirational, celebratory, and sometimes painful works. Here's Rita Braver. We're looking at works by an array of artists across the Atlantic, from Africa, the Americas, and the Caribbean, and Europe, from the 17th to the 21st centuries. Curator Kenitra Fletcher helped organize Afro-Atlantic histories, the most comprehensive look at the interplay of art between Africa and the Americas ever displayed at the National Gallery of Art in Washington. Is there an overall point that this exhibit makes? Yes, I think it shows us how integral black cultures are to the development of Western civilization, of the modern world. The exhibit, which started in Sao Paulo, Brazil, is considered so significant that Vice President Kamala Harris brilliant. That's brilliant. stopped by for a viewing. So this is world history, and it is American history. And for many of us, it is also family history. The first works in this show focus on some of the cruelest aspects of slavery, like this photo from 1863, or this 2009 etching by United States artist Carol Walker, depicting a slave wearing a brutal restraining apparatus. There are portraits of important figures like Joseph Sinke, who led the 1839 revolt on the Spanish slave ship Amistad, and abolitionist Harriet Tubman. This 1936 work by Aaron Douglas, a leading painter of the Harlem Renaissance, illustrates both the agony of Africans being marched into slavery and the everlasting dream of freedom. You have this black man in the center, the central figure who's looking upwards. Oh, yeah, look at that. Towards the red star, which is ostensibly the North Star. There are also works that celebrate the joys of everyday life, including these by Brazilian artist Maria Auxiliadora and Horace Pippin of the U.S. It's showing us that the African diaspora is not just a story about slavery, that there is more to the black experience. What you're seeing is a portrait of Empress Akweke. Dinga McCannon painted this picture of one of her friends in 1975. Was her name really Empress, or do you paint her as an empress? Well, her name was Akweke Singho, and she gave herself the title Empress. She had opinions and she had no shame in letting people understand where she was coming from. And she carried herself uh, as an empress. 
For my canon, there is special significance in having a work in the same show as one of her teachers, noted U.S. painter Jacob Lawrence. What's that like for you? Incredible. <laughs> I wish he was still alive so I can give him a big hug. The exhibit looks forward as well as back, with images that celebrate exuberance and beauty, but also reflect continuing struggle and activism. One of the most dramatic works is this photographic self-portrait by non-binary South African artist Zanele Mholi, who used steel wool pads to form the crown. Do you think it's deliberately meant to reflect the Statue of Liberty? I do, I do. I think that they were thinking about these symbols of nationhood and who gets to occupy them. Why'd you make it so big? To have the impact that you see that on the it walls has. today. <laughs> and for artist Dinga McCannon, there is meaning in the very fact that this exhibit is on view at the museum that was designed to be the nation's showcase for art. Something that's been a long time coming. Finally, we're here. And it's great because now uh, our audiences can expand. So they'll see a beautiful story of African Americans in America. I was so thrilled and thinking, I'm gonna meet Reese Witherspoon. I mean, Lee Cowan continues his chat with Delia Owens and Reese Witherspoon up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. As promised, here's more from author Delia Owens and actor and producer Reese Witherspoon. So tell me about that first meeting. What was that, what was that like? Well, first of all, I mean, I just fell into this book. I mean, her writing took me back to my childhood. Um, you know, I grew up in the 1990s in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was just such a tomboy. I had a big brother, and he and the eight other boys in our neighborhood, for some reason there's one girl and eight other boys. <laughs> we would climb trees, walk around in the creeks, pick up frogs, mess around with snakes. It was not safe. <laughs> um, but this book reminded me okay. of that connection to nature, and I thought, it was so authentically written from a female perspective of what it means to have that connection to the wilderness. And as a, as a producer, I started to notice this when I read Cheryl Strayed's book, Wild. Um, it's about her connection to nature mm -hmm. and it's about women alone in the wilderness, surviving, thriving, learning to take care of themselves. That is such a deep connection that women have with the natural world but we don't see it on movies. Yeah. We don't read about it much in books. And then you really, really barely ever see a woman alone on film in the wilderness. And that's what drew you to it? That's why this is so special. It's so meaningful. It sounds like you guys just clicked. Right we did. Away. We Personally, did. Personally, I mean, not just on the project. But. First of all, thank you for all of that. But I felt the same way. I mean, I was so thrilled and thinking, I'm going to meet Reese Witherspoon. I mean, first of all, I was on an airplane. I just stood up after a long flight and my phone rang and my editor said that Reese Witherspoon had chosen my book to be the September pick. This was back in 2018. I just started crying. I was standing on the, on plane, the plane and I just started crying. <laughs> and, and people were saying, are you okay, are you okay? And the lady I'd been sitting next to said, I think she's, I think she's had good news. <laughs> and, and so editor called me about two minutes later and said, oh, we forgot to tell you, you're not supposed to tell anybody. It's a big oh. secret, and I went, Oops. Whoops. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about the book really early, right? I did. I mean, you put it on your, yes. you added it to your list like, we did. right after. It was flagged for me by a very special person um, oh, really? in the publishing world, and I read it immediately. When my dear friend Elizabeth Gaylor called and said, we would love to turn this into a movie, um, and she has the most impeccable, amazing taste in, in literature and turns them into movies. I just thought, this is exactly the team that needs to shepherd this to the screen. It was that authentic part of the South, though, that also, like, you felt you knew that world. Well, you can't fake it. No, you can't. It's a, um, I think that Kaya is a, a person that so many people can identify with because what Reese was saying is that all of us end up in a swamp sometime during our lives. We all <laughs> sometimes feel discriminated against and whatever happens and Kaya shows us that you can keep going 
no matter what happens, you can solve your problems on your own. What was it like when you went on set? Did you go on, down? And oh you my gosh. We were on set different days, different but days. they sent me pictures from when she saw Daisy in the costumes for the first time. What was it like walking into seeing Kaya's house? Oh, it's surreal because I was so close to the characters, especially Kaya. I had known them for a long time time longer than anybody else and I felt so deeply about Kai and Tate and Mabel and Jim and all of them I just felt like I'd known them for years and um, they had told me several actors that may have played Kai and I was just thinking I'm not sure that would work and then they sent an audition of Daisy Edgar Jones hmm. auditioning for the part and I, they found Kaya and then when I got uh, to Louisiana and met her I never thought that I would stand face to face with Kaya. <laughs> and there she was. Kaya is very, very timid, but she's also very tough. And she's shy, but strong. And so is Daisy. Daisy played all of that so beautifully. The casting was beautiful and the, and the setting. The way it was set up, I walked around some trees mm -hmm. by this lagoon and then looked up and there was Kaya's shack. Must be surreal for you. It was surreal. It was very moving. I was very, very grateful that they went to such an extent to get everything right. Have you, like the first time we met uh, Delia, she was a little shy and Her? didn't really <laughs> like cameras too much. <laughs> Um, but this whole whirlwind, have you seen her kind of blossom in a lot of ways? I mean, it's been incredible to watch the journey of your book being so beloved across the world. And every couple of months, you get the calls about more sales and more sales. It must feel incredible. But to watch you ascend is truly, it's one of the great privileges to, to watch a true storyteller and a creative have this incredible moment. And stay as humble as you are. Thank you. I know I've said it too many times, but I'm just grateful. I'm grateful, honored. I don't, still don't really believe it, but I'm just so happy to be able to share this deep feeling that I had for Kaya and her story to be able to share it with so many people and the connections that I have felt from all over the world. It just means a lot to me. And the friends you've made along the way. Yeah. Yeah. People you never would have. Yeah. 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 I still don't like the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great. And you just look cute as a button. Oh. <laughs> she says to me this morning, I got hair and makeup. <laughs> I'm Tracy Smith. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.